Welcome back to Virtual School Assembly. Today, our guest is Dr. Robert Lemon. Dr. Lemon is a professional speaker and author that has risen to prominence by delivering a high energy message, which inspires people to take responsibility for their lives and live up to their greatness. A leading corporate and college speaker, Robert combines the ageless tool of storytelling with a profound understanding of today's culture. Welcome to the stage, Dr. Lemon. It's a pleasure for me to be here, Tyler. Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Lemon, a professional speaker, and I'm happy to be here with you all today to talk to you more or less about now is your time to make a difference. As I was growing up, uh, young as four years old, I started school, my mom get, got me involved in pre-K, and she taught me my ABCs, and before I knew it, I was in the sixth grade, and then I was a 15-year-old in the 12th grade and in college at 16. And so I didn't really know what I wanted to do, have it become, but I did know that I wanted to make a difference. And so I'm going to share with you today the importance of the duration of the time, the donation of your time, and the devotion of the time that you have, especially while you're in school. Many of my occasions I've spoke for a Barbizon, a leading agency who sent me to high schools, and for years I used to talk to students about what they want to do, have it become. My first question would be, what do you want to do? And most of the time, it would be some youth that may say, oh, that was like Scooby-Doo. I don't know. So I would say, well, you need to know. Because if you know what you want to do, have become in the, as four years old, as eight years old, or at 12 years old, at 16, 18, you have a greater chance or opportunity to accomplish that task. The second thing I want to share with you is don't be afraid to fail. I would always ask the question, how many students do I have that's a D student? Sometimes they would be honest and say, well, I am a D student. I say, well, wonderful. At least we have the opportunity before the semester is done for you to get a better grade. What's a better grade than a D? They would say, C, how many C students do we have? And then I would progress to the B students. And how many A students do we have? Everybody wants to be an A student. But for the most part, I would share with them, there's a better grade than A and A plus. What would be a better grade than A, A plus? Well, excellent, outstanding extraordinary and that's my progression to help them achieve the next level of success the duration of your time it takes four, 40 days and it's 40 days an embryo is formed and then 40 weeks and then you're born the day that you're born wow you should be excited about being placed in an environment where you get to learn what makes the ant believe that he can bring down a rubber tree plant Everybody knows that the ant cannot bring down the rubber tree plant, but he has high hopes. Oops, that goes down another rubber tree plant. As I speak to you throughout the time of this pandemic, many of you may have to at learn, learn at home, have virtual school. Don't be afraid of the challenge of virtual education because education is very key. It's better for you to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So the duration of my time as I was four years old in pre-K, going on to be a senior in high school at 15 years old, one year of college, then I joined the United States Air Force. After I joined the Air Force, I served four years, and I came back home to my community. And so that's what I want to talk to you about, how important it is to know what you want to do, have, and become. Duration of my time as I was growing and progressing, challenging myself to get a better education, reading, always trying to retain information. I decided, well, working at Burger King at 15, joining the Air Force at 17, and then my rich uncle gave me a job at the post office. So as I became a mail carrier and a sales associate, I came back and decided to give back. The first place I stopped was educational institutions. There I saw athletes who were great physically, faster, Prodigies, probably great enough to make it one day to dream and be in the NFL. But I said, what happens if you fail? Don't be afraid to fail. Fail forward. As I would just mentor them, I decided to do a documentary called Vision to Victory, Feel of Dreams. That documentary progressed their lives, being elementary school, junior high. And then along the short of the story, they all went on to graduate high school, all went on to graduate college in five made it to the National Football League, and all nine of them are now professionally active in their career, vocationally helping mentor 
and helping others get an education. So why am I here? Well, I'm here to talk to you about making a difference. Your donation is a sacrifice. The duration of your time, if you spend 10,000 hours learning something, you become excellent at what you're learning. And then devotion. Practice does not make perfect, but perfect practice makes perfect. Making a difference. It's so important for me to share with you that if you want to make a difference, then you want to get with other people who are making a difference. If you get with other people who are making a difference, you want to make a difference with other people who are making a difference doing something that makes all the difference in the world. Now is your time to make that difference. My first start was in my community, helping our students, uh, educating them, mentoring them. And then I decided to go into our prisons and talk to some who probably failed at that level and share with them that it's not over, that it's a second chance. You can take your SAT score, you can take a GD, and then you can come back and be productive. And that's one of the issues I think that we need. We need more firemen, police officers, teachers, authors. We need people to give back, doctors, dentists. And so those are the questions that I may ask you right where you are. You got to want to make a difference. As I was challenged, I said to myself, there's some things that I probably haven't achieved perfectly, but I didn't give up on myself. I will always believe that one day I'm gonna serve, not just in my community, I'm gonna serve not just in the military, but I'm gonna serve across the country. So I became a professional speaker. I wrote my book called, Now Is Your Time, Nine Steps to Reach Your Full Human Potential. In which in that book, I begin to share the process of my journey. Yes, my journey, being four years old, afraid of school, being 15 years old, double promoted, a senior in high school, in college, joining the United States military, and then coming back to my community and filming a, doc, a documentary. Imagine that. So these are some of the things that I've talked about just briefly, and I'm trying to remind you of my different occupations. One, filmmaker. Two, I was a professional speaker. Three, I served in the military. Four, I used to work at Burger King. And number five, I am involved and engaged in my community. So one of the things that I want to share with you today is that you don't know where you're going, you got to first remember where you came from. And so I'm the first to say, the next time you see a turtle sitting on a fence, you got to ask the question, number one, how did this turtle get there? Number two, and who helped him? Somebody paid the sacrifice for me to get my education. It's better for me to have an education not needed than need it and not have it. Someone sacrificed so that not only could I be in my community, but I can share with young people who get engaged and involved socially, help the elderly, those who are now in our five generations that we have, we have the baby boomers. And yes, I gotta explain. I learned a lot about having conversations with baby boomers. Yes, baby boomers, what they ask generational love language is respect. There's a book by Gary Chapman that talks about the five love languages of five generations. And so what I try to share is that Generation uh, Z, which was next, Generation Z, they have trust issues. So I always try to have a cup of coffee with a baby boomer or Generation Z or even a millennial. Millennials, what they want is rewards. And when I think about the rewards of the millennials, if you work hard, no work smart. And then the final Generation Z. Yes, Generation Z wants attention. With all, all the things that's going on around us, if you believe in yourself, as Stephen Covey says so ferociously, other people will be afraid not to. One day, your dreams will also come true. But if you help other people get what they want, guess what? It'll help you get what you want. I always found the blueprint by Dr. Martin Luther King. As a young man, every day he woke up at the same time, he took time to pray, he took time to study, he took time to spend with his family. And then he was about his work in social work. So that's how I got engaged and got involved. I'm so proud to say to you that I've won awards, all the achievements that I've won. It's not because I've done anything great, but it was because of my mom, my dad, my grandparents. And yes, let me mention great grandparents, who in my time, when we asked them questions, they would say, you don't need to know. And you, yes, you have some grand, great grandparents that has none of your business. You don't need to know. So some things they would say, it's for me to know and you to find out. So it's not for you to know everything in the world. But there's a few things that you can learn about this culture, about the world that we live in, 
that one day your success, let me share this with you, become nothing more than a statistical event. My nine points that I wrote in my book, one was ideas. The second one was having uh, education. Number three, association. And then number four, information. And then number five, you had to set goals. Number six, you had to believe in success. Number seven, you had to take action. And then you had to have a visualization. And then you had to trust in the duration of time. Those are some of the nine steps that I allow myself to achieve success. Success is nothing more, let me share with you, than the statistical events. Not only are there people who are going to help you, but you have to be mentored because for you to know, somebody has to teach you. You can't teach what you don't know or lead where you don't go. As a professional speaker, what I share with you is that when you explain the inexplainable, when you find solutions to other people's problems and you set the example as the person that needs to know, when you become the smartest person in the room, your gift one day is going to make room for you. So make a difference. Make a difference in your community. Make a difference in your education. Make a difference when you are achieving success in mentoring others so that they can make all the difference in the world. I close by sharing the story of a grandfather with his grandson walking on the ocean. And the grandson begins to realize that the grandfather picks up starfish, begins to throw the starfish back into the water. He says, well, granddad, you're picking up all the starfish. You can't possibly save all the starfish. He says, nope. He grabs another one. He throws it. He says, but for this one, it will make all the difference in the world. So for you one day, you're going to be right where I'm sitting. You're going to be speaking to a youth group. You're going to be speaking to elderly. You're going to be involved in your community. And one day, possibly president. Yes, I said president, male or female. Your gift is going to make room for you, and you are going to make all the difference in the world. That's one of the things that I always believed that one day that I was going to be something, not sure what I was going to become, but I am what I am because of the people who believed in me and supported me and helped me get on that fence. God bless you. Thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you, Dr. Lemon. Uh, what a fantastic message and one that I think will really resonate with the kids watching this. Uh, I want to ask you a few questions uh, just to dig into your story a little bit more. You talked about uh, this idea of do have become and I'm guessing that when you were four years old, you weren't planning on becoming a filmmaker or an author or any of those things. Yet you, you suggested that the earlier we can, we should have plans to do, have, and become. Um, how do you reconcile those two things that you don't know what's going to happen with your life, but we need to make plans now for the rest of our life? Opportunity always affords you the, 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 the way, the gift that I have. I believe that I always say Lyndon, Linda Ravenhill said it's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than have an opportunity and not be prepared. And so when I was four years old, I learned my ABCs, but by the time I was six or seven, I knew that I wanted to become a communicator. So my dad said, what do you want to become? I said, dad, I want to be a communicator. I want to be involved in broadcasting. So lo and behold, as I was practicing in my journalism classes, and then when I graduated high school, I went to college my first year for, for, for communication. And then I discovered that I fell in love with the camera and I fell in love with both sides of the story. Hmm. The person who's telling the story and the person who is the story. So that now becomes my life. And I enjoy doing it each and every day, sharing with other people what is possible, what's necessary, and that it can happen if they believe. Absolutely. I can feel your passion for communication, even though we're doing this virtually. Uh, it's, it's cool to see that come out. Let's talk about the documentary for a minute. Um, prior to filming this documentary with, and following the lives of these students who came, went on to be great football players, um, where did that idea come from? Why did you want to film something like that in the first place? Well, it started out as a answer to, it was a basketball documentary called Hoop Dreams. Mm. where they had these back to basketball players who were actually playing basketball and they had parents who were really trying to help them fulfill their dreams. And they both became all-star players in high school. And then by the time it was time to graduate, they couldn't pass their test. 
And so I thought it would be wise that it maybe I could be in South Florida, we were number one in the nation for murder and number one for poverty at the same time. So I said, I felt a sense of urgency to talk to these young kids who were seven years old about the importance of education and how important it was to FCAT, how important was ACT, SAT. And I said, if you want to play football, nobody wants a dumb football player. And so I began to push them and challenge them. If they had a better grade than a C, it must be a B. If you get C's, then you got you to gotta get a, a B or A. And then I begin to challenge the vocabulary and say, well, A plus, excellent, extraordinary, outstanding. And that became a progression. And so my son, who is Terrell, uh, he played football at seven, eight years old. And, and I said, because I was his father, I wanted to show him not only was I helping him, I was helping them. And that became a progression. And they all went on to pass their test. They all went on to college. And they all got a shot at the National Football League. That's awesome. What a cool story. Um, it's amazing to see how uh, when we have a dream or we have a vision for something and we work towards it, that it, that often helps other people. And, right. and as you're sharing this message of making a difference, uh, I think simply being someone who acts, you know, you took action on this thing because you wanted to make a difference in that particular area. And that has snowballed. I, I know that after your documentary, um, years later, you, you wrote your book. Um, and again, that's not a normal thing. Most people want to write a book, but they don't do it. What actually got you uh, inspired to sit down and put pen to paper and get that book done? Well, it was so key because I took a court observer program and I saw students and I saw the dropout rate and I saw the failure rate. And I decided for the first time, rather than me uh, speak or preach or try to lead, I had to do it by example. So I did a study. My re research was on successful people like Bill Gates. I began to study the Oprah Winfrey's. I began to study the uh, Steve Jobs. And I found that these principles were all value principles. And I used the math, the nine, the number nine is a very peculiar number. And everything that I began to write about started connecting. Nine times zero equals zero, but nine plus zero equals nine. Nine times one is nine. Nine times two is 18. One plus eight is nine. So I used those teaching techniques to get people engaged and involved and, and, involved. and before I knew it, it became my passion. It became the success story of my life. 30 years you learn, 30 years you earn, the final 30 years you got to give it all back. So I decided that I wanted to be the example that you can make it from out of the neighborhood to doing good. You can become successful as a speaker at Burger King at McDonald's. And by the way, always remember that those people who work at McDonald's, a lot of times people don't give them credit. But if you were to practice from six years old in athletics, until you're 24 years old, all the time you spend on the football field, track practice and baseball and basketball practice. If you started working at McDonald's at four years or five years old, you make just as much as those athletes that never make it to the National Football League at all. So that was one of the things I wanted to push education because the latest statistics I learned before I did research, almost every athlete four years after they finished the National Football League 75% of them are 400,000 in debt. And so you have to fall back on something other than baseball, football, or being an athlete. That's absolutely true. Really good point. Now, kids that are stuck home right now, they're learning from home, and we're in this time of uncertainty. It's a little scary for some kids. Um, and so you have this message of make a difference, but a lot of people feel like right now they can't do anything. They're just stuck at home. What advice would you give to kids about how they can make a difference even right now? Well, one of the things that I found out, and I said uh, earlier, a lot of kids believe that practice makes perfect. But I always have to change that language. It's not practice makes perfect. It's perfect practice makes perfect. It is when you see athletes like Tiger Woods or you watch uh, Barack Obama as president or Bill Clinton, it doesn't make any difference, Ronald Reagan. It's the things that you do when people are not looking. As I said earlier, it's better for you to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than have one and not be prepared. It was during those times that my mom, when I was practicing my ABCs, I was a spelling bee champion by the time I was uh, 10 years old. So that was going on. When people wasn't looking, I was learning my vocabulary. 
And as always, use speaker speaking platitudes, trying to change attitudes, leading you into lethargical attitude, teaching you more turpitude In other words, a lot of people are talking a lot and not really saying nothing, but somebody ought to say something to make a difference in each and every one of our lives. You have to study hard. I always told my son, you go home. I mean, you go hard or go home. Be good, get good, or get gone. The marketplace is not going to wait for you. So we want the best of the best. And your gift is going to make room for you if you're one of the best. So study hard, kids, while you have an opportunity. When everybody else is sleeping, hey, you stay up. Because one day you're going to burn the oil at both ends. And you're going to become successful. And one day you'll be sitting here just like I am having an interview with Mr. Tyler. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Dr. Lemon, thank you so much for your time today. If kids want to learn more about you, um, where should they go? You should go to my website. It's www.robertelemon.com. I'm also at Twitter, at Robert E. Lemon. And you can find me on Facebook or you can, you can probably Google me. And uh, if you want to contact me, my book is called Now Is Your Time. Nine Steps to Reach Your Full Human Potential, and it's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and most online bookstores. Awesome. Thank you so much for being with us here today, Dr. Lemon. Thank you. Thank you for having me.